I mean, I really liked how you said, like, instead of bringing a coordinator that has a scheme, he's going to mm-hmm. bring in a coordinator that could build around the players. He like, bro, like I'm telling people, the defense, the defense, mm-hmm. the defense, it's, they're going. And all I need is the defensive coordinator to make it do what it do. Because, like, I'm telling you, I have not forgotten from the last breakdown when you, I was you, I was like, man, you're right. If the defensive coordinator would have made those adjustments, the defense would have been way better. Like doing that UCLA yeah. game, like you know, you'd be like, hey, just you bro, know. it was just change of the front. It's like, yeah. hey, if they're continuing to run this way, why right. are we still doing an over front when we can go to an under front and everything's gapped out? And <laughs> and what I'll say with that is, <laughs> oh, I'm about to say this. Um, <laughs> So what I'll say with that is part of that uh, depends on who you have in the box, Mm -hmm. meaning in the press box during the games, Mm -hmm. because they're the ones helping you make the adjustments on the field. A coach on the sideline really cannot see what's going on. They can't see who lost their gap. They can't see anything like that. So you got to be able to look down from the field. So I I said, I'm about to say this. So we played South Alabama my senior year. Uh I tore my MCL week one. (laughs) against UAB and when I tore my MCL I had to sit out like three weeks MCLs healed themselves so I played rest of the season with this the biggest knee brace on ever um still locked up but anyways so South Alabama so me and my coach uh had a fantastic relationship like Mm -hmm. just elite relationship so during that game me and uh one of my other teammates who I was really close with who had a great relationship with them uh, we were on the headset for the games so we're on the headset with the defense coordinator saying what's going on so watching one play versus south alabama and they kept saying uh on the because my d coordinator's like hey what just happened upstairs like what happened on that play like what happened and they were like uh oh coach they ran power uh and that's why we got beat i said hey coach p i said that was split zone he said now was that power or was it split zone and the coaches in the uh, press box, they're like, uh, it might have been split zone, coach. He said, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> so, hey, so that's something that's something that people don't take into account is it matters is who you have in the press box because they're your eyes for you. Mm-hmm. Just like I say, we can't break down film without all 22. Right. Imagine how much harder it is when you're on the sideline. Oh, you right. Yeah. See it's, what's going on. Yeah, yeah. So you have to have reliable people up in the press box that are letting you know, hey, this is what we need to do. This is why we're getting gashed. Um, so yeah, no, the, the scheme plays a lot into it. Uh, I'm I'm really like what I'm hearing from the defensive coordinator. The what I like about him the most so far, and with Charles Kelly, it's hard to tone down that defense. Mm-hmm. But the good thing about Robert Livingston is he technically doesn't have a defense. Right, right, so right. He's not just stuck to, hey, this is what we have to run. We got to run. He, um, to me, he seems like a um, really fluid guy. Mm-hmm. And when I say what that is, I don't think it could be during the season. He seems like the type of coach that may see a scheme or something someone else runs. is like, hey, let's try that and see if it works for our guys. Mm-hmm. Let's see if this is something that we can implement here. Like, I truly think he's going to cater this defense around who he has on that team. And remember, that's something that we talked about when everyone's panicking. Why haven't we picked a D coordinator? Like, right. We need right. to pick a D yeah. coordinator. Why haven't yeah, we that picked a D name. coordinator? Where's that D coordinator? And there was a few reasons for that. One, we needed a coach to come in that was able to coach the players we have Mm -hmm. not have a scheme and then try to make the players fit that scheme. We Uh needed somebody who could uh, have a scheme that fits the players or create a scheme that fits the players. Right. Right. Other thing with that is coach prime wanted to keep his position coaches and a lot of D coordinators, when they leave, they bring all their coaches with bring all their position. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that was another aspect of it. But yeah, from what I'm seeing from the short stuff I've seen from Robert Livingston, in my head, I have to force myself, Robert. I always want to say Sean, the basketball player. <laughs> like I, I'm, I'm, hey, you too, I always want to say Ray. So, <laughs> but uh, but yeah. So what I've seen from he looks like 
one is a younger guy. Mm-hmm. Seems like he can relate to the players. Um, he actually, I think he played at William and Mary. He played for the same linebacker coach that was my defensive coordinator at Nevada. Oh, wow. He came to be my D coordinator at Nevada right after there. Um, so he seems like a younger guy that can relate to his players. But yeah, like I said, he doesn't seem like he's stuck in his ways. Right. Well, that seems like he, he, yeah, he seems like he's really going to, you know, cater to the players. Like if I have a guy like Levante Bentley, from what we've seen, a lot of people and us included, had we just seen the first part of the season, not had any context, he's written off. Like, yeah, man, he can't yeah. play. He can't. Put him in the transfer part, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You but like, then oh, you're no. like, hey, he's not playing fast mm-hmm. because he's not in a position to play fast. He's mm-hmm. doing more than what he needs to be doing. And that's something that you have to take account with any player. The first thing I would do as a D coordinator is say, why is this guy not playing fast? And what is needed for him to be able to play fast? And that's and what I like. And based off that. And that's what I like what Robert Livingston said. He said, uh, you know, I'm trying to implement the defense. I want these guys to play. Like, and I mm-hmm. want them to be able to play fast. I want them. And, I mean, I really liked how you said, like, instead of bringing a coordinator that has his scheme, he's going to mm-hmm. bring in a coordinator that could build around the players he got. Boy, Coach Prime really learned. See that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Because that matters. That it does, right. man. We we so we struggled at Alabama and M on offense. Mm-hmm. And one of my favorite coaches, the one who brought me down there, Coach Spady, he was our head coach. He was uh one of the coaches at Nevada. He was one of the coaches at Nevada when Cap was there. And that's mm-hmm. why I had ended up there. He brought that same pistol offense to AM. Unfortunately, we did not have the same personnel mm-hmm. that could run that at Nevada, bro. I'm telling you, our D coordinators are like, hey, keep it under. 30 points and, and we got a shot like our offense would score. We would uh-huh. know that they would score at Nevada. It was, or at a was a complete difference. It was like, Hey, keep them under six and we got a chance. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, bro, I'm being serious. I'm being so serious. And it wasn't, Damn. and it wasn't a bad scheme. Like I had players saying, Oh, this scheme's wet. No, mm-hmm. I told him, I said, y'all just ain't good enough to play in that scheme. Like y'all don't fit that scheme. So the scheme can completely dictate how mm-hmm. a player succeed. Namdi Asamoa was a menace and over the Raiders, mm-hmm. a menace went to Philly and could not fit at all. Oh. And, and we know his name, Namdi mm-hmm. Asamoa. Mm-hmm. Had that been reversed, had he started in Philly, we would never have known his name. <laughs> had his career had been fast. You know, and, right. and that's the difference sometimes. Like there's oh, you see right now I with Kyle name. Pitts and uh Atlanta. Bro, like this dude at all. If, right if, if if we hadn't seen Kyle Pitts's rookie year in the NFL, everyone would say he was a bust and he was trash. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But we were actually able to see it. So yeah, it's really important the scheme you have and mm-hmm. being able to implement that the best. Like coming in as a D coordinator and seeing, hey, this Levante Bentley guy's actually really talented. Mm-hmm. He yeah. just, that's not, he's not a two gapper. He's not a right. guy who I want doing all this. Let me let him do what he does best. Mm-hmm. And Hey, Travis does this. Let me let him do what Shiloh. Do let me watch it. Okay. Let me let him do. That's what makes a great coach. Um, and, uh, adaptability, like yeah, exactly. you gotta be able to adapt. Um, mm-hmm. you know, you can't just be good at coaching elite guys at this position. But then if you, you know, don't have stars at that position, you, you can't be good. Right. So I'm, I'm really excited. Uh, that that's what per, per really got us on the map, bro. That D coordinator video. Like, cause that's when people are like, hold on. Yeah. yeah. These guys actually know a little bit about football. Yeah. I, I, because a whole lot. Cause man, that coordinator <laughs> video blew up and people got super excited, like super bro, excited we, about it. I think that D coordinator video, I don't know what's that like 30 K something like maybe 25 K we had like 500 subs. <laughs> <laughs> Right, and we had dropped crazy. that. And oh, that was crazy. Seeing what he did at the Bengals, I have a cousin who played for the Bengals uh, in the secondary when he was there, and he said he loved uh, Coach Livingston. He primarily was at the safeties, and my mm-hmm. cousin played corner, but he said he loved um, Coach Livingston. So, yeah, I'm I'm really excited what what he's gonna bring to the table from what we're seeing in the spring. And just so y'all fans know, um, as we're going through spring ball, one, we're not gonna see a ton from well off. No, from the defensive side. Mm-hmm. Um, but even in the spring game, spring game is going to be pretty vanilla. And right. What I mean by that is, 
you don't want to tip your hat too mm-hmm. much. When Especially you got new playing. defense you're implementing. You got new offense. You're mm-hmm. not want. And, yeah, and, you're not trying and, to put nothing and, out there. Yeah. So if this was last year's Charles mm-hmm. Kelly, I think we're going all out in mm-hmm. in the spring game as far as the defense because you've already seen our defense. Right. Like, you know the plays. Stop it. Mm-hmm. Um, but now nobody knows what Robert Livingston is going to run. Like, right. We know that he learned. Um, they said he was a mentoree uh, of the D coordinator at the Bengals, but mm-hmm. he's his own man. So I'm sure he's going to incorporate some of that stuff, but Hey, he might bring some completely different stuff. So we're not going to be able to see everything that we really want to see this spring. So don't get discouraged by that. It'd be like, Oh, this is basic or we're doing that. There's yeah, supposed to be. Yeah. It's logic. Trust the that. process. Yeah. 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 Trust <laughs> the process. So, but North Dakota, Oh yeah. We finna light it up. Boy, I can't. Mm, I can't wait for that North Dakota game. Man, bro. look, look, look. I'm, I'm looking for the turnovers. I'm, I'm looking for the uh, defensive touchdowns. Fan dude, we got to have a conversation. <laughs> man, yeah. Fan dude, come holler at us, man. Yeah. Come I think we us. about to, boy. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm look, I'm excited. You know what I'm saying? All mm-hmm. I'm, you know, I want to see defense. I mean, they got the aggressive. I want to see them get the sacks, and I want to get some turnovers. Mm-hmm. Sacks and some turnovers. Mm-hmm.